my favorite little functions here, y equals x squared. Well, I do want to say about the graphs and the homework quiz, make sure when you're graphing something for me that you put a few points. Uh, because, yes, we kind of all know what y equals x squared looks like, but if you're getting points for your graph, make sure you have a few points l labeled so I know that you actually know where that graph goes. Just point that out. So x squared starts at 0, 0, at 1, at negative 1, and at 2, it's up here at 4, right? I don't really need to see an xy chart when you're graphing, but if you're graphing on a test, make sure you show me some points. The new part is saying, what if I asked you how long does it take to get from negative 2 to 2? We don't, know, we don't really have a time in there, uh, and that's something that we've probably never thought about before. And that's something that we can uh, do now <laughs> if we throw in a third variable that we call the parameter. We're excited about that. That's all this. That means like, what do we do? I should have stopped them and not seen them, right? Normally my seniors always tell me my grammatical errors. I used to put lots of dots. You know how like, you do like dot dot dot? I always felt like the more dots you put, the longer you were supposed to pause. So sometimes I'd be like, what are we going to do? And I'm going to dot a dot a dot. And then my seniors always warn me that they learned from adoption that only three dots is all you're allowed. No matter how long the pause, you're only allowed three dots. So you'll notice when you see my notes, they no longer have lots of dots. But I like lots of dots. It shows that I took a big long pause. But I think you're still allowed to do exclamation points, right? Totally different in how you cite everything and, and all the rules and every person. And so I was like, oh, I know MLA, I don't know ABA. If you're going to be a science person, you're going to be ABA. So now when these kids do MLA, I don't know them all because I've been through it. <coughs> I'm so sorry about that. But it's just different on how you cite things, like switching gears, for instance, to teach them. So when we're talking about a parametric equation, we're going to throw in these new variables t, kind of representing time. And so for every parametric equation, it's really two equations. You're going to have x equals some function in terms of t, and you're going to have y equals some function in terms of t. And we call those parametric equations, and t is the parameter. What we're going to do today is a couple things. We're going to sketch, and I'm going to show you how you still are going to just graph on xy plane. Remember in algebra 2 when you do, that, do like xy two step in algebra 2? One day, like the two graphs point to an x y plane. Kind of weird. The z axis like comes out at you, and it's not a very, I struggle visually to see that. It looks like 3 here. Yeah, yeah. So when you plot points in the x, y, z plane, you can make like three-dimensional shapes. Most people use a computer these days to do that, not, not by hand. But when I was in college, Calc 3, we did all this stuff three-dimensional, and I got pretty good at graphing it. But now, I struggle seeing the three-dimensional thing on a plot of paper. I struggle. I'm not good at it. Yeah. Calculus? I've got two part of me. Three kind of like the same stuff you do in calculus, only now in three dimensions. So if you know what you're doing. 
think I got a, I think I got a B in calculus. I was like, all right, took my teacher wouldn't let me retake a quiz because I missed. But I had a doctor's note and everything, and my professor wouldn't let me retake it because professors should just do whatever they want. Like, they don't have to follow rules like they do at school. And I was like, here's my doctor's note. I have the flu. Like, oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, you get a zero on that quiz. Whatever, it's a B. I'm over. But we're gonna just graph on the xy plane. And the big thing is that we're going to plot using t, t values, uh, and if you plot in increasing order of, of t values, then you'll kind of get the direction that the curve is going. And I'll show you how we can do that. Uh, what else are we going to do today? We are going to eliminate the parameter. Mm. Eliminate the parameter means get rid of that t value. What am I meant? Get rid of that new variable. And basically, it's just going to be a little substitution, and I'm going to show you how we do all this. The good news is, this is all we're doing today, is practicing with this. I think it's like six problems on your homework tonight, and more on that. Right. Right. Well, I think you have to plot, make an XYT chart, plot it, and eliminate the parameter. So it's a lot of those. Not really. It's not that bad. Rachel told us today that you want to just drop out of school. Oh, and we decided that this is what pre-calculus does to you. Is when you get to pre-calculus, you just think, I quit school. We decided you shouldn't drop out of school. <laughs> Everybody okay with this? Can I go? Can I go? Maybe go. I'm going. So here's the question. It says, find the ordered pair x, y for the value of the parameter. So we're going to start off nice and slow here. Four of your six homework problems are this. You're going to be so happy in a minute when you see all you have to do. It's these exact directions. So notice you have an x equation and a y equation, both of them in terms of t. These together make up one graph. So the, the new thing is parametric equations, two equations for one graph. Uh, and it has three variables. There's an x and a y and a t. What we want to find is the ordered pair when t equals negative 3. So how do you think I'm going to figure out what x is when t equals negative 3? I'm just going to plug in negative 3 here, and I'm going to get that x equals negative 3 plus 1. So x equals negative 2. It's not a bad buildup. It's an easy day today, I think. It's just noon, so we're going nice and slow. We don't have enough time to do the whole section, so this is all we can do. And to find the y value when t equals negative 3, I'm just going to plug in negative 3 here. And I'm going to get what? 9 minus 6. I'm going to get that y equals 3. 
So when t is negative 3 for this set of parametric equations, the ordered pair is negative 2. That's it. That's the answer. So that's the next one. Because that's only one point, right? To graph it, we need lots more points. But, boy, I'm too loud. This is what the other two problems on your homework are like today. It says, sketch the curve by eliminating the parameter, indicate orientation, and they tell you what values to use. Because if they don't tell you what values to use, then you don't know which part of the graph you're supposed to go. So write that down, and then we'll discuss what all this means. So I kind of shortened it. The directions on your homework are like, So we're going to not eliminate the parameter yet. I want to show you how you can graph it without eliminating the parameter, and then we will eliminate the parameter at the end. So on your homework today, it says um, find the points determined by giving you some values. That's the first part here. If they give us some key values here, we're going to kind of do what we did on the last one, only we have to do it for every value between negative 2 and 2, every integer value. So instead of making an xy chart, Right, where normally we pick x's and we plug them in to get y, we have to make like a t x y chart. So for every t value, we have to find the x and the y that goes with it. And again, how do you know what values to use? They tell you. So I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And this is the part you're just going to plug in just like we did on the last problem. When t is negative 2, I can figure out what x is by plugging it in up here. And if you want, like, do all the x's and then go back and do all the y's, or you can do a step at a time. But if I plug in negative 2 for t, you can agree I get 0 for x. And if I plug in negative 2 for y, I get 4. And we're just going to go through and fill those in. Maybe 1 plus 2 is 1. I'm gonna, I like to do all my x's first. 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. And then when we graph this, you're only going to graph the x's and the y's. So let's graph these points, and then I'll show you what this means, indicate orientation. So, 0, 4, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 1, 4, 4. What's up? I'm not graphing the t values, right? I'm just graphing these, my x and my y. If I don't have a t axis. just a cute little parabola, right? So when we talk about the orientation, if you go back to what we wrote, we said if you if you graph them in order of increasing t values, which is how I wrote this out, we would connect it starting from here and going in this direction. Do you agree with that? These are my points. I graph this first, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And so the way that you can indicate orientation is you just kind of put little arrows on this showing that it started here and went in that little direction. 
How cute is that? Not all parametric equations are going to be functions, and actually a lot of them are not functions. Uh, you can get some weird kind of graphs, you can get some parabolas on their side, you can get uh, circles, and this is a way that you can graph them without actually having to know those equations. Um, so let's see, we found our point, we graphed it, we did orientation. The other thing we want to do is when it says eliminate the parameter, that means put it back in one equation without t. So this means um, get rid of t again. And really, this is just like substitution. I want to get back to just x and y without t in that equation. So you want to solve for whichever one would be easiest to solve for t and plug that into the other one. Which one of these would be easiest to get t by itself? The x or the y? The x. Because this one, you'd have to square root both sides, and you'd have plus or minus the square root y. We don't want that. So solve the one that's not squared, if there's one that's squared. So to agree that I could write that as x minus 2 equals t. And then just substitution. If I want to get rid of t, can I take that and plug it in for t right there? And I would get the equation y equals parentheses x minus 2 squared. Now look at this equation and look what we graphed. Is that the equation for this little parabola here? Yeah. And so when you eliminate the parameter, you get back to an equation probably that maybe you recognize if it's a function. You might not recognize it if it's not a function. How do you feel about that? I, well, a parabola on its side is not a function. Like if the x, if the y was squared and not the x, like if these were switched, then that's a parabola on its side. I don't think we get into too much. Uh, later on down the road, like next year, next semester, when we do trig, we'll do this again with trig functions, and we'll get really cool graphs. Today they're not that exciting. Parabolas on their side is about as exciting as you get. Circles. We can do those with sine and cosine, but we don't know that yet. Let's do one more of these, and I'll be done with those three. Oh, yeah. All this stuff's my answer. So on your homework, it's like part A, B, and C. Part A, they want you to make a chart and graph it. I think maybe that's part C. And eliminate your parameter means write it without t. So if you have an equation without t in it, that is what eliminate the parameter means. So you want to make sure you know that. Because like on the test, I'll say eliminate the parameter, and you have to know that means get rid of t. Write an equation without t in it. So let's do one more that's not as cute as the parabola. And then I'll be done with my notes today. Same direction. Look how exciting this one looks. values from negative 2 to 2. I think on your homework they actually show in negative 3 and 3. But other than that, it's the same as this. Notice I didn't put arrows on that parabola so that it goes on forever because you only graph it for the values that they give you. So that's why it's important that they tell you which values to choose. Well, I do a little bit more work on this one, but x isn't so bad. If I plug in negative 2 for x, I'm going to get negative 3. Otherwise, you're not going to make the full graph that they want. So whatever values they give you, you have to use. Okay. 2, 1, 0, 1. Now, on y, you have to plug t in both the numerator and the denominator. Maybe you need to show a little work. I'll show a little work out here. I'll get negative 2 over negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So that's what? I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 over negative 2, so I'll plug that. If I plug in 0, I get 0. What happens when I plug in 1 for t? over zero, right? The 
which is not good, right? That's not zero, that's, that's undefined, which means that there is no y value. Maybe that's an asymptote on our graph. Maybe. It's definitely a problem on our graph. It's definitely not zero. And if I plug in two, do I get two? Two over one. This is where uh, sometimes eliminating the parameter is, is easier to kind of figure out what the graph's supposed to look like. Like if you did this and you're like, what does that mean where it's undefined? We could eliminate the parameter before we graphed it if you want to see um, what's happening. But let's graph our points and then we'll do the eliminate the parameter if you want. Again, we're not graphing T. We're graphing these points. So at negative 3, it's at 2 thirds, which I'm going to say is about right there. At negative 2, it's at 1 half. At negative 1, it's at 0. And at 0, it's undefined. I'm going to skip that one. And then at 1, it's at 2. Not much of a graph there. So before I connect that with some lines, let's eliminate the parameter and see if we can figure out what that entire graph would be if, if we weren't like restricted between negative two and three. Um, which of those is going to be easier to get to by itself, x or y? Definitely x. Do you agree with that? I don't want to try to solve that for t. But for this one, I could say what x plus one equals t. So that means that I can replace both of these t's with x plus one to eliminate my parameter, and I would get x plus one over x plus one minus one. Here's a little side note. On some homework quizzes I was grading, I don't really remember which class it was, on the f of g, g of f stuff, I told you you don't really have to simplify it if it's something crazy, but if you have something on the bottom here that you can simplify, you can put that together. Like there was one on the, the f of g stuff that like you had like minus one, minus one, and most people just left it as x minus one, minus one, instead of saying that's x minus two. Just know, like simplify it if you can. Like don't leave that like that. I'm going to write that as x plus one over x. That would be the equation. Y equals x plus 1 over x. And why is it undefined as 0? Because we have 0, like x is in our denominator. That's a vertical asymptote. So like that's like a vertical asymptote of my graph. That's why we had to skip it. And what kind of graph is that going to make? What's that going to look like if we made this whole entire graph? So yeah, like kind of the reciprocal graph, right? A rational function where it has the two little L kind of shapes. So that's why this one's kind of going like this. And if I graph this, starting here, uh, and go in order, I'm not just going to stop there at um, negative 1, because really I'm going to show that it's really going to go like an asymptote, right? Like, so I'm going to kind of draw a line like that. Just like on the parabola, we connected the points in between. I can't connect that to there, but I can kind of put an asymptote on it, and I'm going to put my little arrows on it, like that. I only have one dot up here. What would my horizontal asymptote of this be? One. Remember horizontal asymptotes? We're going to have a test over this eventually, kids. Uh, the numerator and the denominator have the same degree, so the horizontal asymptote would be like right along here. So I think I could say that this side is going to go like this. And again, I'm trying to follow my asymptote. I'm not going to do this. This would come out 2, but I didn't pick anything bigger than 2. Or, yeah, 1, 2 is my biggest point. So this is kind of a very weird looking graph because we can't make the whole thing. I like to make the whole thing and struggle. I struggle with this because I want to make this keep going like this. And I want to make that keep going like that, but I'm not. That's it. Because these are the only values that we're allowed to graph, so these are the only values that we're allowed to graph as well. But, but that is between negative 2 and 2 on there because the asymptote keeps going. But if I kept picking numbers for t, like if I picked 3 for t and 4 for t and 5 for t, then I could get more of that graph. But you only have to graph what's there, which is kind of weird on a rational graph. All right? But eliminating the parameter is kind of a, a big thing. Two of these on your homework that you're actually going to graph and, and do the chart the other four are just finding one ordered pair for the, the missing thing. So 
do really do have a pretty good chance of getting this done before you leave today. All right? So all you're doing today is one through six. One through four, you just have a repair tracer, but then five and six, you do want to, uh, to graph those. And neither one of those are rational, so hopefully it won't be that bad to do. So get started on it in case you need some help with your, with your graphs. 